is art can be hard, but it is a skill and like any other skill, it can be learned. Hey everyone, Layla here, and I'm going to try my best to help you out in your art journey. And I've been taking art seriously since I was a kid. And after 20 plus years of self-teaching and starting a YouTube channel, I kept getting asked pretty persistently if I could make tutorials and teach. So I made this channel, How to Draw with Layla, and it will be full of short and long videos in the hopes that it helps you all out. And first things first, let me clear off this desk and get into supplies. I have a few supplies already here that I use consistently, which you can probably see. I've got markers on my desk and I've got fine liners on my desk. In the description, I do have a more thorough list of art supplies that I do use. So aside from these Uhuhu markers and these Uhuhu fine liners, I have pretty much a generic mechanical pencil. This specific one is a pretty popular one. I don't know the name right off the top of my head, the brand name. I kind of chipped off the little place where it says like the name, but anyways, any generic pencil works, to be honest, mechanical pencil, number two pencil, just whatever you got. I also use Posca paint pens. This is the one that I use the most. And if you've seen other videos on my channel, you see that I have used this a lot for my highlights. I do occasionally use Copics, not a whole bunch. They are rather expensive. So I try to keep the ones that I do have for quite a long time by not using them as often. <laughs> And this is the paper that I use. Let me see if I can scooch it in here. It's the Express It blending card paper. It's acid free and archival, ultra smooth, bright white surface, laser and inkjet compatible. Perfect for marker blending and illustration, ideal for stamping and card making, high surface saturation and non-pilling. I personally really like it. I've heard you can also get like just heavy cardstock paper, which works just as well. I've not used the generic form, but one day I will, but I really like this one and sketchbooks. So I actually got quite a few of them, but this one and this one are my go-to. So this is a render sketchbook. No, it does not come with an Among Us cover. This is actually my own personal painting that I put onto it. But yeah, this is my Crescent Render sketchbook and this is my Ahuhu sketchbook. And that's basically it. Do you need all this? Absolutely not. But I did want to show you all the supplies that I use and will be using in most of my tutorials and videos. I already use pretty much all of these supplies in the short videos that I make of tutorials. So I just wanted to go ahead and just cover my basics with you. And then I just wanna share a few pieces with you. Some of these I've done in short form tutorials. Some of these I've done for marker comparisons. Some of these I did for Among Us when I was really into it, and I still am, not gonna lie. <laughs> and some are pieces I've done for work. Let me make some more space. <laughs> and yeah, and just the biggest thing about art is understanding the foundation of art. And the foundation of art is shapes. Everything can be broken down into shapes. When we look at this, I pull this out because it is the most simplistic of shapes. And by that, I mean, we look at that and we can see that this Among Us character has a visible curved sort of shape going up. And I'm just sketching this out really quick just to show the actual shapes within this piece. And then we can see that it's got, you know, let's say squares for legs, a square here and a square here. And this is sort of an angry face here, but its visor, like on the actual Among Us characters is an oval. So we can just quickly like draw an oval shape. And this is pretty much the base of an Among Us that we've got. And so I just wanted to sort of get that broken down because then we can take, you know, something more complicated like this. I'm just gonna flip this over. And we can also see shapes when we break it down with the head. The head is circular and the ears are triangular. And then, you know, it has an oblong sort of body right here going out. Is it more refined? Yes, you can do the neck right here. The back goes up and then it kind of dips down for the spine and then it comes back out. And then we've got this 
S-shaped tail going up and then pretty much just coming back down and just everything can really be broken down into shape. So that's the first thing I'm touching on. And you can see this in my how to draw a simple cat tutorial where I really like break this down and go into it in short form. And so beyond shapes, the biggest thing about drawing is just practicing every day. And I mean that like literally every day, even if it's just 10 minutes, like 10 minutes alone is more than enough time. Get a sketchbook like I'm doing right now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna like flip through the sketchbook. Warning, these aren't the best pieces. I don't really do full illustration pieces in my sketchbooks. That's not to say I never do it, but I just don't do it a lot. So I do do a cover page because I'm ridiculous like that. So this is supposed to be me in my Hufflepuff t-shirt because I'm a Hufflepuff. And yeah, this is an old sketchbook, July 2019. And I'm supposed to finish it, but um, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so these are just quick, like thumbnail kind of stuff and super sketchy stuff. And just, I don't even know what I'm doing stuff, <laughs> clearly and just jotting down ideas and just trying to basically practice and get that hand drawing. You know, this these are more finished pieces. I, this is actually from a tutorial that I did on how to draw a feminine face and a masculine face. I really enjoyed it. This is some more idea jotting, some more sketching. This is actually Spinel from Steven Universe. Audrey Hepburn, because you should always draw from real life. That is so important. Even though this was a drawing from a photo, but drawing from real life is also important too. <laughs> Still lives are important. This was another idea I had. This was a sketchbook spread for a video that I did on my Halalela art channel. And this was flowers as girls and so on. Oh, and this is me. And this is all the things that I like and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I'm really excited to get into these tutorials. And I do want to say that during these tutorials, you know, you're going to have to learn to kind of expect failure and accept failure. And it's okay because, you know, I feel like people hear that and they're like, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? And it's like, no, like seriously, because we're human, we're going to fail, especially when learning something that we've never done before. Like failure is inevitable in some cases. And it's learning to kind of just realize it, accept it and keep going, keep moving because eventually you're going to get it. And that lastly, comparison is such a thief of joy. That's actually a quote by Theodore Roosevelt. And it's just really true. Like I feel oftentimes when people start a new skill, they look at the artists that inspire them and they're just like, oh, I'll never be as good as them. What am I doing this for? Or, or even, in my case, my big case is I see artists who are like 13 years old and they're just creating masterpieces. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I could never do that at, you know, 13 years old. That was, that's insane. And sometimes it leads to feelings of inferiority and it can kind of stop us. It can kind of keep us from creating, keep us from learning. And that's not good either. And just learn to really love where you are in your journey and know that Practicing every day gets you closer. It gets you closer to getting better. On the flip side, comparison can also give us feelings of superiority, which can also stunt us in a way that, you know, we think, oh, well, we're so good at what we do. We have nothing left to learn. And that's ridiculous too. But yeah, so I want to close it up here and just say thanks for joining me. And I'm really excited to release my first full tutorial and I'll be focusing on a whole list of topics and things, things like hair, how to draw faces in depth, how to draw eyes and, you know, a nose, a mouth. And I've done those things in shorts, but I'm hoping that longer versions will help break it down for you all even further for those who really want to just get into the nitty gritty and all these details and stuff. So I'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Bye.